I'm Rachel, and this is the Eat Better, Live Better workshop series. My question to you today, my wonderful audience, is true or false? By cutting out 500 calories in my diet, I will easily lose weight. I want to hear from you. What do you say? True or false? I feel like that's a bit tricky, Florenzi. It's not really easy to say whether that's right or wrong. And there's and there's many different ways you can look at it. You might be able to lose the weight, but then can you maintain that weight loss? So it's it's uh it's tricky. Absolutely. And I can already say you've all graduated top of the class <laughs> because of course <laughs> it's a tricky question. Yes, we do focus on cutting out calories. Yes, of course we need to make dietary modification. Yes, of course we focus on that lifestyle and behavior but it doesn't mean that it's going to make it easy. It doesn't mean that that's the only resource that we use to look for that sustainable long-term weight management. If we just think about the body, appetite metabolism is a simple mathematical equation, one plus one equals two, then the weight does not come off quickly. And as many of us have experienced personally, as soon as you try to take the weight off, all those hunger hormones we have talked about, that tricky brain with the two parallel systems hedonic and homeostatic, that uh, cognitive function, that brain in the middle, all the peripheral organs, the adipose tissue, and, and et cetera, et cetera, kick into play. The body fights that weight change. So congratulations, you've all graduated top of the class to answer that question. It is tricky, it's important, it's false. You're not gonna lose weight that easily. Obesity is a chronic metabolic disease. If this was only about the math, no one would be overweight. And I love that comment. I think that is so powerful. It's so true. So with that, we'll go on to the next true and false question. I should not consume anything that is processed. I'm curious to know. Um, I feel like the tricky thing about that one, Jen, is the should. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> If it's altered from its natural state, then it would be considered processed. Right. So it, the fact that something is processed doesn't necessarily mean that it is not good for you or mm -hmm. it can't be part of a healthy, a healthy diet, a healthy routine. In order to lose weight, I can only eat fat-free foods. I'm seeing a lot of false. Maybe this, maybe this one was too easy, Mario. <laughs> Super false. Someone even Super said that. Super false. I love that. That is so awesome. And you guys are all right. And the thing <laughs> with fat-free food is that those diet products, more often than not, will add some sugar to it. You know, you can't replace an ingredient. You can't remove an ingredient without replacing it with another. So looking at the nutrition facts, uh, table is super interesting when it comes to that. And like I said, fat just adds more palatability and it adds more flavor to food too. I gave into a craving, so I am doomed. I am a failure and I won't ever lose weight. Well, I, I don't know if I would say true or false, but I would definitely say it's a reality for me. <laughs> My brain automatically goes there and I have to talk myself out of the fact that, no, I'm not doomed. <laughs> yes, my comment is that um, that was me a few years back where if I messed up for the day, oh, I'm, I, I'm not going to do this. I don't have this. Um, in the past, I've now lost 135 pounds and have been keeping it off for now since uh, pretty much 2013. Um, I mean, the, the only problem is that sometimes I do slip up. But I pick myself up again and say, okay, so you messed up for one day, one meal. It doesn't have to be a day thing. It doesn't have to be a month thing. You just pick up and keep going. One bad meal is not going to make you gain all that weight back. But if you keep going at it, that's where you're going to run into problems. And just realizing that we're human. And yes, one bad meal is, is okay. And just forgive yourself. And I never used to be able to forgive myself to have that bad meal. It was always, okay, so you blew it again. You, you, you're a loser and you're never going to get this. Thank you so uh, much for sharing that. That's, that's really powerful for uh, a lot of us to take that on as well. I have full control of my behavior. 
Um, Sabina says, not always in control, but I am responsible. Oh, I like that mm. response. That's a good one. I certainly feel like I'm not always in control of my behavior. Sometimes when I eat a way that I didn't intend to eat, I feel like that decision was made way before I eat the food. <laughs> a lot of people saying, yeah, it's true. We're not always in control of our, our food and, and our actions that we take necessarily. Well, and, and I think it's, it's worth reminding everybody again, that if, if that's the sensation that comes through, then being able to, again, apply those skills that, that everybody is developing of awareness and curiosity in that moment to say, okay, so what happened? How am I feeling? What's going on? Am I hungry? Am I full? Am I satisfied? Is there something else that's influencing my choices in the moment? And, and not judging for making choices, but being aware of what might have led to those choices and considering that the next time. It's about, it's about living and learning. 